Welcome to the Soul Patch Podcast, the podcast where three American expats explore different topics related to living and working in South Korea. With the combined 50 years of living experience in Asia, there are plenty of stories to tell. So, pop in your AirPods and make yourself comfortable. It's time for the Soul Patch Podcast. I spent a bit of time with um, my students in Zoom over the last. Uh, couple weeks i've had um i offer to my students uh no credit just come and hang out so it oh, so like small I, groups I, I get like five. yeah so i get about anywhere from well i had one on one so that's the smallest but the average would be like five or six students and me and i get to actually spend time and really practice a little conversation but a lot of it's just for fun students that are excited to you know uh actually try using language or they just want to meet me um all right that's how you're doing your, your zoom classes are are, are that way not, so, not, that, not, not, so not, not, not all mine just the i did one complete live week like uh lecturing all live. but anyway um what this was is different so i have a regular class and this is just like extra on top mm. so this is uh there's no credit there's no credit so the students are are unwound you know, mm-hmm. when they show up, um, I had one student, she showed up vaping and I, I was going to call it out. I was like, you're vaping what? on camera. Um, yeah, I was going to like, the. it's not exactly the most respectful thing if you're in a class and you pull out your vape. I don't know, but I kind of liked it. Actually, I, I just I didn't mention it. None of the other students mentioned it. And I just kind of went with it because that's the atmosphere we have. It's this yeah. more casual thing. The reason I bring it all up in the context of this conversation is because I've been in that time, one of the most easy things to talk about is what do you want to do with your future? You know, yeah. we're teachers, we're working with freshmen. And I have a lot of foreign students, uh, foreign, not Korean students this semester. And uh, a lot of those students obviously are from China and across the board, all the Chinese students are looking forward to their lives living in China. Mm-hmm. The, if you ask them where they want to live, what they want to do, they many of them are looking to move but within china if okay. you ask to a bigger city right? students you yeah or yeah or just like this city is where my industry will be and this is where i want to be or um yeah but the korean students uh you still get a, a really large i'd hesitate to give a percentage but a large portion of the students they're looking to leave the country permanently right the question i had was um did do you guys uh what's your pers- perspective of this of students have you talked to them much about this i mean i'm talking to my students in the current uh common ce course that all of us teach i'm in the unit um you know basing my topics off the textbook i'm in the unit about economics mm-hmm. so we're talking about money and i do you know i do the big questions because they're easy for conversation like my big topics are things like uh how much money do you need to be happy you know like this kind of stuff right um you know what is the meaning of life you know just <laughs> trying to get them going you know yeah. uh but when you ask when you ask a 20 year old how much money you need to be happy i have them do this and then actually write it down and then we all share at the same time and then we discuss like what that money's to be used for you get some really really wild differences and it's all it's all about expectations I have a range, probably the most common is about 2 million won a month. So about, you know, less than 2000 US dollars a month yeah. Yeah, would be pretty, enough to be happy. Yeah. That's skimping, but you can get there. Like you, These kids right? don't understand modern economics. <laughs> well, so, so, yeah, right. So, yeah. Some of them, that's true. Like many of them have never had a job. They never had to pay rent. Yeah, but, this, is, this is not going to get them anywhere in Korea. Yeah, but talking to those students, most of them uh, that are choosing that number it's based on their perception of the question. So I, I tell them how much money do you need to be happy like today, starting right now. So they're picturing their situation right now. It might be living mm-hmm. in a bedroom in your parents' house. If I had two grand every month and I'm living with my parents, oh I'm yeah, damn happy. Right. In the refrigerator. Like, yeah. yeah. But uh I have students that say they need up to 15 million a month. That's their goal. And it's it's straight million a like, month. Damn. 
they might it's also be the money. ones that are thinking about like how much like to afford apartment and things like that. Like, well, exactly. That's where the discussion goes. The discussion transition. I mean, I don't just ask them to survey, but then I'm trying to get them. Yeah. I'm trying to elicit a conversation. So the students that are choosing over 10 million a month and up the their perspectives are for costs that are here in Korea and what they want to do with that that type of money, which is substantial. You know, you're talking about that'd be 120 million so over hundred and ten thousand dollars a year yeah. but for them they're like yeah that's what it would take for me to be able to um be able to be married have two kids own my own own my own apartment own a car and be able to retire by the age of 60 is that is actually the under. most accurate answer the 2000 is totally unrealistic for if you wanted to have the the family and the it, 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 i guess it depends on if you have two incomes or whatever you know or if you're, yeah. you know, parents like what, what the question? Yeah, it's just a, it's really interesting. I mean, yeah, I think that those kids are actually more in touch with reality than, than the one who's has the modest, you know, two million answer. I don't need that much to get by or whatever. But yeah, how are you going to survive out there? I wonder if even even as a hundred k a year enough to how long would they have to save to be able to buy an apartment? To, to well, be able to buy interpretation, an of, interpretation of the question too. Like I could understand. Uh, both of them. I, I think 100k a year is is for me would be an overestimation because the, the point of the question was you'd have uh, how much money do you need every month forever? Mm -hmm. So that'd be your retirement payment. You're, when you're 85 years old, you're still collecting 100k a year. Like that's not typical for the average middle income retirement plan right. in the U.S. or here. I think that's kind of aggressive. Then you know students are you know. They also have problems interpreting like the the question, uh, which is the whole point, is to create some conversation. So they they're thinking about inflation, they're thinking about you know, uh, you know, taking care of uh, my grandmother, and mm -hmm. you know, there, there's all sorts of different factors they get into. It becomes interesting. But I brought it up. I brought the the topic because I was curious if you guys did any, anything like this with your students who are in that same age range, where you know they're young twenty year olds, they don't have kids, they don't have. Like, what are they thinking? What do they think their future will look like? like yeah, they're I, only focused on just trying to get their spec up to get a job after university. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, they're so obsessed with just like, just getting into a company. I don't think they're even, I think that hmm. they don't even have any, um, like I said, that they don't have the hope that they would ever, you know, like 15 seems like such a, a it's so far off on the horizon. It's like, what if I could just get in with a, a good company and that's the, and then worry about the money later? You know, that it seems like the job part is what they're obsessed with, N not necessarily how much. And that's getting so is. much like every every year I talk to students about getting jobs and the their outlook on getting jobs is, is rougher and rougher and rougher here. So I understand mm -hmm. why so many of them want to leave the, the country. I'm really curious. I haven't talked to too many. I haven't asked that specific question about how, like, do you want to stay in Korea or not in the future? So it doesn't surprise me that many of them want to leave. Um, I mean, that's what we did. We left our countries for a better life here, of course. So same, yeah. same thing. I, I totally get where they're coming oh, from. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say that. But um, I mean, but, I, I didn't but, leave for a better life. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, in your but, case, I mean, you. This is you the American pretty, life. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I mean, I. I didn't like where I was. I didn't think I was, I wasn't looking for a way. To, I wasn't looking for a way out. You know, I wasn't like for escape. I, I was kind of, yeah. uh, I kind of crash landed though, back in there after uh, three years in Asia, but that's a different, uh, a different podcast. Yeah. Um, but like yeah. if Korea, I mean, if, if, there, if students are going to be leaving, that's just going to expound on the low birth rate here. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, like for for the future. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And it's just going to be a downward spiral of people not having kids, of people leaving the country. And yeah, things are going to get really rough in the next 20 to 30 years. Well, so, you, yeah, Kevin, you had shared in our discussion, you had shared an image, um, uh, like an infographic thing. If I yeah. read that right, is is that was that current? It, it said it was like it was 2019. It was like 100 countries. There were so many countries listed, and it there was, was a bunch Korea of countries. Has, and Korea has the, has the lowest birth rate. Korea had the low, and this was again two years ago, and it's already gone down. Like according to that thing, well, it's it not was, the projection. Like, Korea had the, that's now. That's happening. That was two years ago. It's 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 worse than that now. Okay, so it's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Korea has the lowest OECD, not OECD, just the lowest global 
birth rates, like the lowest at something like, I remember seeing the statistics last year because I mean, it's already been going down and down and down and down and down over the past while, but then the whole COVID situation, like people just don't want to have kids now, even the ones who were thinking about having kids in the past, people are like, well, let's wait until, you know, shit calms down. Um, and so last year, I remember seeing the statistic somewhere on the news in, in 2020 that 2020 set new records for low birth rates and Korea was at 0.84 births um, per, per couple, right? And so that means like the, the normal, you need 2.1 to have a replacement population right. um, approximately mm-hmm. and at 0.84, so well below replacement numbers. And I guarantee that it's lower this year as well. It's, it's, I don't know what the number is going to be in 2021, but it's probably 0.7 something likely. I think it's just yeah. dropping. It's this, this has been the case since we've been here, correct? Yeah. Am I wrong? I mean, this has been yeah, a trend been, for a, decades, right? Yeah, I don't in think Korea, Korea was the lowest. It's that? definitely been a topic of Korea having a very low birth rate. I don't think Korea was the lowest until after we came here. I think I remember seeing them like pass by some other countries when we were here. Like they are now the lowest, but I wonder, a few years ago already. Have you guys seen any um, initiatives uh, like, I don't know, like advertising, subsidizing, anything like this? Well, years ago, I was on a little trip in Osaka and uh, it, was, it was very obvious. It was in your face and it was everywhere, all over the city. Mm-hmm. Um, advertisements for uh, dating, advertisements about having children specifically. Like mm-hmm. if you have kids. Government like advertisements, get, like public service yeah, and things. Yeah. But it was really like, I mean, I took a couple pictures of it because it, it surprised me. I've never seen something like this. Yeah. You know, like government being like, get in the bedroom and do the thing. You know, it's like, <laughs> whoa, that, that's different. That's different. It, was, it wasn't never... quite like on the nose like that, but it was kind of advertising like that and big billboards and it was everywhere in Osaka. And I don't feel like I've seen that happening here. Have you? I, I think no, there's I've seen been the some- I've seen things in other countries, but I've you never seen, seen it any... here in Korea, although but they there have, are initiatives. There are some, uh, there are some, some uh, government benefits for people that have a second kid or a third kid. I mean, you, there definitely are- the first kid these days. There are incentives Absolutely. right now to have a kid, yeah. Um, I think it's different paid, though, right? Jack. Have you seen advertisements for it? Have you seen them like, um, like no? I mean, I, I guess I like, haven't seen it. I just think that like people are kind of in tune with like what the incentives are already. It's kind of it's like political platforms, right? Mm. If you vote for me, where I'm going to even uh, I'm going to create an even more robust, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what you would uh, um, entitlement system or whatever for people. For, for those that have kids and the more kids you have, the more economically uh, beneficial. So they don't need to advertise now, it. I don't think they, I don't think it's the pot is sweet enough yet for people to have that second oh, and no. third kid because like they're, because people, oh, no. Koreans do the math in their head, right? It's like, that's why it's the academic system. It's the Hagwon system is why people don't have multiple kids. You have, you have two, if you have enough money or one and you can put all your resources into that one kid, but you're talking, I'll just, I'll just uh, say in my own family, I think our Pagwan fees are over 2 million a month just for, wow. just for that stuff. I mean, that's, that's like, uh, what would you get for that that's in America? Almost our income. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, it's like private school in America. It's like a boarding school. Yeah, you know, that's that's level. just the Hagwan fees. Yeah, very good boarding school. I would, I would say 2000 a month. Yeah. And, yeah. and we're, we're probably, so, we're probably, we're probably spending more because it's our daughter's in a, uh, you know, a, is a arts, uh, is on a path to be an arts major. That's what she wants to do. So that you pay a little bit more for that, like the piano and the, uh, or dancing and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, if you're doing just the, you know, math, Hagwan, science and all those, those other things. Uh, Kumon is another one, a com- big company that's got offices in America that uh, for mostly Asian students. Um, that, that whole system is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's another payment you have to, you know, add, it just adds up so fast, you know? And so if you have multiple One of my buddies kids, has, his daughter is six now, I think. And he's paying, he, he's sending his daughter to a pretty nice, uh, on kindergarten thing. And like, they have like horseback riding, like they take the kids out like once every couple of weeks. They've got like, it's, it's a nice like kindergarten, yeah. but he drops like 600 awesome. a month just for that. That does for that. Me. Yeah. Hagwon. Yeah. Um, 
And that's a, a relatively nice one for, you know, it's, it's for his six year old daughter. And he's got yeah. another daughter who's now two or three, something like that. But well, I could tell you guys um, a really funny story is we, uh, when my daughter was uh, uh, going to go to Yuchiwan, or she went to some private Yuchiwan, uh, private uh, preschools. And uh, when it came there, there are government preschools, but uh, you have to, there's a lottery. There's only enough slots mm. for a certain number of kids. Yeah. So a friend of ours, a family friend went to the lottery and pulled the bingo ball out of the, and if you get a red ball, your kid can go, can enter the, the, the government school. And we live right across mm. from an elementary school and he pulled the red ball for us. Like he just did us a huge solid. And so my daughter got two years of basically free preschool before she, uh, I'm sorry, right. free kindergarten before she entered first grade. And it was, it was just a, a fluke, but other people that don't pull the red ball, I have to figure out their own situation. It's like, okay, 600 bucks a month, 300 for a okay one. I, I don't know if there are like cheaper ones and, and better ones. I'm, I assume there are, Something but like that. yeah. It's really, uh, it's, it's, you know, for parents in Korea, I, I kind of understand why the birth rate is low because that the rigor of the, the, the academic uh, expectations for the kids. And uh, I, I don't know. It's, well, it's, no, it's, also, you know. I think that that rigor of the ac academic expectations, I think now for like, imagine our students, right? When you talk to them about wanting kids, like already people our age are not having children in Korea. But then if we look at the students who are now in their 20s or 30s, like they've gone through that terrible system of, of having their entire life just work, 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 work. Since they were in kindergarten, they were working, they were doing homework. I mean, I still remember, I'll never forget one of my first year here, I was teaching at a hagwon and one of my favorite kids didn't show up one day. She was like the cutest little girl. I loved her to death. And I was so sad that she didn't show up because she was one of my favorite students. And I asked her sister, like, where's, where's your sister? I, I miss her today. She's like, oh, she was up until after midnight last night doing homework. And this girl was like eight at the time or something like that. So what kind, kind of homework stuff. was that? Was um, she like coloring? A, you I, know, like it's, a, well, you know, it's like she has like, you know, <laughs> falling asleep, trying to color to. some, uh, you know, like a, like a coloring no book. Idea. Stay awake. <laughs> Barney the bear. The dots. <laughs> yeah, right. In the lines. Stay in, in the, the lines. lines. You but, do it um, again. Yeah. But uh, like, so these kids, I mean, that actually now, actually that student would be in university now. I know, that's probably just, that's now that I think about it, yeah. which is, yeah, crazy. Um, but so actually, so he's, she's a great example because Harmony was her English name. Uh, Harmony, if, if you're that's ever listening to this, I miss you. <laughs> um, Harmony and Melody, her sister's name, her, her sister's other name, was her English name was Melody. Um, they were adorable. My favorite, my favorite girls at the Hagwon. Uh, and uh, so she's now in university. And judging by how much work she was doing in, you know, beginning of her elementary school life, I, I can't see that that would have toned down at all. And then, you know, they're they're working through middle school, studying Hagwons in high school, studying for the Suning test. As soon as they get into university, they're they're studying their ass off to get their spec up to maybe get a job. And and it's just you know one thing after another. And these kids now are going to be like, well, I just went through all of that. So A, I don't have the money to afford it. B, that was rough. Do I want to put a kid of my own through that entire system or not? So it, it just, yeah, furthers the spiral, I guess. Yeah. And and also the, you know, we talked about the Budongsan stuff, the real estate, you know, a couple of podcasts ago. And uh, just being hmm. the, the, the aspect of never being able to buy a home, I think is just enough to get for some people to just kind of, surrender it's like oh, yeah. oh, i'm going to be a renter for the rest of my life and i, I don't Cost know of I housing mean, here is ridiculous yeah i mean that's a huge that's a huge part of it too uh, do you ever i i, I do oh, yeah. going back to ryan's like at talking to the kids like sometimes i ask my students you know uh we do like a if you had a million dollars what would you buy every single one it's Perfect. real estate you know Building. it's not like stock market it's not it's just i buy real estate you know that's the the automatic answer so there's a discussion question I've used for a long time and I, I'd suggest it for you. You should try it. Um, it's a twist on that one. So I got kind of bored asking students what you would do if you had like a million dollars, $10 million, whatever. Yeah. Um, I turned into kind of a, a three part lesson. So the first part's um, looking at numbers because for any of our listeners that have studied uh, Korean language, uh, you probably are aware of this, but the way that 
we divide the base 10 system in English versus Korean, it's different. It's in uh, divisions of four instead of three. So numbers are uh, even like my girlfriend is fluent in English. We speak English 99% of the time. But even then, when we use numbers, we'll code switch. So often I'll say Korean because I'm just thinking of the number quicker that way, or she'll say Korean because she's thinking of it quicker that way, or vice versa. Um, it's just whatever uh, kind of bubbles up first because it is this, this challenge. So that's the first part of the lesson is I throw a big, big number and then we try to go through and uh, describe the number, whatever. So it's just a, it's a goofy thing, last five minutes. Then I give them that question, what would you do if you had this money? And that discussion is usually really quick because it is like answers like this, like, yeah, I'd buy real estate. Or, I buy these house, days, I a buy lot of things they house. say, no, man, Bitcoin. These, days, these days, it's like across the board. All my Korean students, you know what they say? Bitcoin. You know what they want to do with that money? It, yeah, it's in, that, in stocks. Oh, they don't, okay. sometimes, sometimes they say crypto, but they'll say like straight up investment. So I think a lot of these guys now and girls are getting their uh, first brokerages. So uh, kind of crazy. Um, that, that's a, that's a that, recent change. That's like in the last like three or four years that I think this this whole, yeah. you know, idea of like the Peter Pan type of, uh, you know, uh, uh, is that isn't that one of the apps? Fractional like, shares. There's ways, there's ways to get fractional shares. Right. Because one Bitcoin well, is like $50,000, right? Yeah, like if anybody's listening to this in real time when this gets uploaded, you probably are aware that Apple is like dying the last couple of weeks with a lot of the market. It's kind of a, it's just been a red couple of days, a couple of weeks. Um, oh, that's because I bought like and, one stock of something that happens every time. Yeah, I buy. so it's I because of Kevin. Know. So if anybody's anybody <laughs> suffering because of Apple, it's Kevin. Yeah. Um, so I was, I made some comment about her. I was looking at um, some numbers here. And then my girlfriend, she remarked that she's like, oh, I also have Apple stock. Oh, the dividend was coming or something. And she remarked about that. And I was like, you have Apple stock? I said, how'd you do that? She says, oh, it's on Kakao. She has a fractional share. It's like um, her dividend payment was like 0. 000000001 cent. <laughs> so, Don't spend it all so in one place. On yeah. here. Anyway, yeah. anyway, back to the lesson. So the lesson, the idea you can steal from me, and this is a fun one, um, is... Uh, so the first part, we, we talk about the numbers. We play with that a little bit, have a little laugh, get a little comfortable with it. We talk about what would you do with this money? Most of them would say I would invest it in some way or shape, not or, or form, not buy a sports car. That's kind of faded from fashion. Now it's like yeah. I want to have a little more safety. Um, and uh, then um, I present them with a novel question. I say, okay, I put them into groups if I'm in a classroom. I say, look, you now have, I take a smaller number, like 100,000 or 50,000, like 50,000 US dollars. Uh, and you wake up in the morning, it's laying next to your bed and you have to spend it all today. Oh yeah. And you That's can buy one. anything you want. If you want to, if you want to buy a sports car, go ahead and buy a sports car. But at midnight, you can't have any assets. Brewster's Millions. So, oh, okay. Yeah, it's Bruce. Yeah, exactly. That's what I got the idea from. Yeah, it's Richard Pryor. That's how I got the idea. <laughs> you can't yeah, have any so, so, You could live like a rich person for yeah, a day, so, but so you might exactly. as well just go so have a, a Ferrari. A, yeah, you can only drive it yeah. for yeah, 24 hours. Okay, that's that's interesting. And that's a good idea. And you can't right. benefit from anything after midnight either. So if you buy a sports car, you can't like give it to your brother and then he drives you to school because you still benefit from it. Yeah. So it's the no, Cinderella like, the favors, slipper, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's a really fun discussion to see where they go with it. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. I, I'll use that for sure in my class. Um, I like the I like that idea um, because it it changes the uh, yeah it it changes the the perspective. It's like it's not it's not about the future. It's about right now. Um, which, uh, you know, I, I mean, right. uh, the, the, the recent thing is, uh, that the, in Korea, I think they raised the interest rate a little bit. Um, and, and that was to cool down the market because a lot of young people were borrowing money to invest in the stock market. And I think the Korean government saw that as like, okay, this is, this portends, a uh, you know, ominous fate here. If, if, uh, we let people speculate too much on this borrowed money, what happens if, everybody goes into default when the you know market you know dives or whatever and so it's a it was a it was a good uh it's good reasoning 
but the why but i think they don't they don't dig enough into the the root of the problem is why are people why are young people go, going to the market with this borrowed money as opposed to letting mm-hmm. them have access to real estate which is what they really need and what would is and and so i feel like this is a, a kind of a global trend though i think in america a lot of yeah. uh, money you know it funds really are is. buying up real estate and they're going to try to create a middle class renter class and i think that's what's happening in korea and so i think a lot of these trends that we're discussing are actually global kind of global economic trends and not necessarily korean centric sure. you know and, um, and, that's, some, and a lot that's of, something that i've been thinking about as kind well. of like a, a head of it a little bit with do you know kevin what's his name kevin kelly the inevitable he's um one of the early writers i think for wired magazine or founders um, i haven't heard of it. him but uh, he, the, yeah. oh it's a great it's a great book to read um and it's totally relative to our discussion tonight um uh much like that lesson the, the point of that lesson was to have a discussion but it ends up sussing out where students put their value right mm-hmm. um and you can definitely see it shifting from being like carefree like hey i'm a 20 year old i'd like to have a sports car and go travel and go to Hawaii. And it's it's shifted into, I want to invest, I want to save, I want security, which, um, and I think you're right, it is a global thing. And I think his name's Kevin Kelly. Um, Inevitable is the name of the book. And he talks about, uh, it's all near future trends. So the way that we're shifting to subscription services versus ownership, so you no longer buy a copy of your software, you have a subscription to your software. Um, he envisions a future where you won't own a bicycle. If you need a bicycle, it'll show up on your doorstep in the morning and then you just leave it wherever you go to. Um, your clothes, you won't yeah. own really any of your clothes. Well, your clothes will be a subscription. Uh, your laundry, you won't do laundry, that'll be a subscription. You'll just leave it in a, a big box. There'll be a big box by your door and a bicycle will show up into it and a couple of suits every morning your breakfast, everything. Tailored um, for a 6'8 it, guy? It's, like it's, me, it's even? Not a quite idea. <laughs> I'll, my yeah, subscription guess, will be a little bit more, I think, yeah. Uh, just a, just a yeah. It's, I see this 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 move towards um, there being uh, fewer owners, more renters. There is a lot of negativity, and we can kind of, like, lament the situation. And I'm not trying to say, like, I believe it's all sunshine. But in his book, what he's trying to illuminate is a brighter way to see these things. Like, although, yeah, the economy here is making it more and more difficult for anyone to own, like we talked about in the real estate episode, we did the Budenstam one about um, how there's no more Junse. Uh, Junses are disappearing. You can't really yeah, own. Yeah. The uh, large deposits. Have enough money yeah. to buy is large deposits, yeah. yeah. Um, are rare to find that opportunity. And then being able to have the capital to actually purchase is getting harder and harder and harder. But like you said, that's not Korea. That's America. That's a global trend. But, you know, the other side of that coin, I think, of of the uh, inevitable uh, coin is to is also the pitchfork idea. You know what I mean? When it gets so imbalanced, like, you know, you you, you can wealth inequality gets to a certain level. And, you know, yeah, right. Yeah. And then people will come out and they're going to eat the rich. Exactly. But the in his in his book what he's trying to to say is that there's he's trying to show the the optimistic version of it so it's like yeah you won't be able to own your house anymore but you don't want to because if you're an owner then you have to deal with repairs you don't have mobility maybe you're going to work five different jobs in your life which is pretty common right now it used to be like my father my mother they had one job but um for for myself, I've had uh, two careers, I guess you could say. Um, my sisters, they've all had a couple. Um, and it's pretty common. That's what you teach kids in America. It's like, yeah, you're going to have three or four careers. That's just the way it works. So those that type of mobility becomes challenged if you have to own property. Um, trying to sell a house can be really difficult. Um, there's certain ways of looking at the economics of renting where it's it's cheaper than paying the interest on a mortgage if you don't plan, and it gives you that ability. Uh, you know, the repairs on a bicycle. Why would you want on a bicycle that you use once a month? It yeah. doesn't make any sense. If you could have the exact same bicycle delivered to you on those moments. So I know bicycles is getting kind of far away from the topic of students and satisfaction with life. And, <laughs> and here, I just yeah. want to say, like, I'm not I'm not all doom and gloom about it. I, I think, no, no, I think I... Korea's experiment model just like the rest of the world. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. I have a little bit of hope for it. 
but I'm not, I'm not a kid here. So I don't know. Like I've never had to experience like hell Joseon. I can understand it abstractly, but I've never, yeah. I mean, I can't share that emotion. Yeah. You know, no, I, that's sympathetic. I'm very much, uh, uh, I, I, I always, I'm trying to get in the psyche of, of my students, but I, but I understand, you know, the older I get to, the harder it is to kind of relate to, you know what I mean? Like I, I just become more of a yeah. curmudgeonly, I guess, in my uh, older age. Or I just can't. It's also uh, it's also tough for us to see some of these things. Like I mean, work life balance is one of the big things that Hell Joseon talks about, and mm -hmm. our work life balance is ridiculous because we're professors yeah. at a university. We don't have that that stress to deal with. Yeah. Um, cost of housing we do have to deal with because we're still living here. Stagnant wages well, we still have to deal with that as well. Um, yeah. Gender inequality I mean that's something that we've been talking about a little bit on the off in, in our chat, and that's just like a big topic here in korea as well mm. but then raising kids is is harder and harder there's hard there's they, both parents have to work these days daycares are hard to find um many people go and give it to their parents give, give the kids to their parents to take care of but that's getting harder and harder in korea as well to to, to give the and there are more and more and nursing grandma. homes i think these days you know more more people are you know, just unable to you know take care of because it's like they have two a two income family that's the way that they can make it work it, this is the same same trend from like the 80s in america right where we switched from what just dad works to mom and dad worked and now yeah. i think korea is in the same predicament where mom can't be a full-time nurse to grandma you know so we have to come up with a the market has to create some kind of solution to that so uh, you get right, uh, right. You nursing homes you know More um, nursing homes yeah it's it's uh it's it's interesting. I, One thing I've ever I'm, seen. I, the... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kim. It's a little off topic, um, but something that I'm curious about because I I studied media in university, and so I'm always curious about like how the media affects how people think and things like that. And have you noticed in the last few years that there's a lot of um, kid programs? Like, do you know that show Superman Returns? Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know of it, Jack? Do you know of the show? Um, it's super popular. No, I'm like, not sure. It's a years. Korean so, show. I'm, I know the kids. I'm sure you've seen it. It's it's a show where they basically have like rich celebrities and it shows them raising their kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that show. I've watched it many, many times. Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah you've, you've definitely seen it. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it, it's an interesting show. And what I'm curious about is how the media, what what impact this might actually have on on people wanting to have kids or not, because it shows these, you know, people, these celebrities you know, having this great lifestyle with their kids and kids are great and kids are fun. Um, so it almost seems like it could be like a positive kid thing, but at the same time, I think a lot of people look at that show and they realize like that dude is crazy rich. He lives in a house that's three times bigger than mine. Yeah. You know, and the kids are do that show in a, in a time. one room, every, you know, with the brown right. wallpaper every you know? week, yeah. every week, the celebrities are taking their kids to another epic destination in the country and they're playing around and they're, they're just doing this and everyone, and people are like, well, it's fun to watch. I almost think that those shows are are like a it's like a vicarious um, a way to living. live vicarious exactly yeah. yeah it's like I can watch oh. this show and have kids of I don't need to have my own kids I can watch that because I'm never going to be able to have kids like that anyway this this situation is not feasible for me ever yeah. in my life is what I think potentially people are looking at they're like I can't have that so but you know I think what? I think I also think yeah I see what you're saying I thought you were going to go somewhere else with that um i see what you're saying though that that's a really interesting point like vicarious experience it's becoming more and more common as we become more and more connected with with media internet right but i thought you were going to go a different direction there was an article i read i think it was on seeking alpha just a couple of weeks ago talking about instability um in in markets and investments in general and and where it comes from and you know it's one of these like the market's going to crash scare uh article things and it was talking about how one of the, I don't know, what you, what's, what's the metaphor I'm looking for? It's like the Jenga block that you're going to pull out and it's going to collapse oh, yeah, the whole sure. tower. Dominoes. There's a better, the, what is it? The dominoes, dominoes will fall, like, I guess. Yeah, the, the one, domino effect. Something. I think yeah, Jenga is go good. With Jenga? Uh, that would be yeah. <laughs> okay, dominoes. So the, the, the critical, oh, it's, it's more of a stack is the way I see it. Um, all right, we'll say domino. So, um, the critical domino is that uh, the concept of YOLO is kind of new. And where does that come from? And so this author, 
was trying to explain how if you look at the market or you could look at like Korea, like people watching that show, it's going to distort aspirations. So we ha- we're just inundated. We, we've, we've got so much media being pumped at us of the rich and famous, of people just doing so much better than you. It doesn't matter like, like who you are anymore. You're getting, and we always knew there was celebrity. There were celebrities forever, you know? But lifestyles of the rich and famous, presence, remember? Your yeah. Life, yeah. yeah, right, right. Lifestyles rich and famous, and that's where, where it would be. That's It'd be compartmentalized. Yeah. Yeah. It's there, it's on TV, it's over there. Or like, you know, it's the tabloid at the checkout. When you're getting your groceries, you see John Travolta and he's got like a gold chain on, he's in front of his mansion. You're like, <laughs> damn, that guy's rich. That yeah. looks pretty cool. And then you're just forget about it. You forget about it, you get in your car and you're gone. Now we have this constant pressure around us. So I wonder, I thought what Kevin was going to go for was um, what he's going to, was going to explain is how seeing successful parents do, doing this kind of thing, like the kid gets to go to the zoo on this day and then gets to go to Hawaii on this day and then gets to go to Paris, but it's not international. But the point is the kid gets to do all these things. And that's, that's what parenting is. And you should, you know, this is what you need to do. And you're if failing you if you're not parent. I think we're already past that yeah, step exactly. where people have like just gone, they've, they've gone, one, we've gone one past one step past that, or maybe 10 steps past that where people are like completely capitulated and they're just like, just, you know, sitting at home going, uh, that's so far away from where I could ever be yeah. that I'm just going to watch it's this in like a weird sort of wish fulfillment kind of way where I can imagine that I might yeah. have that experience, which I, that is, is a really shrewd observation, I think. And, and I think the, 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 the opposite side of that would be the art that's coming out of Korea, like it's, at least in a cinema form, like and Netflix, Squid mm. Game, you know, economic, you know, these, these people are just uh, no spoilers despondent. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, it's just about, you know, it's basically it's Battle Royale. If you ever watched that movie, the Japanese movie, you just, you know, it's 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 it, and Parasite, that movie, too, where, you know, yeah. it's, it's like these really clever people who in any born in any other situation were definitely smart enough to be very rich and successful, but they were born into poverty or had a couple of unlucky breaks. And so this family who is actually probably just as smart and sharp as the other family just, just got pulled a bad Uno card, you know, in life. And so there, the the idea of the meritocracy, the bootstrapping and all that sort of stuff is kind of, it's worn off now. I think people are kind of past it. It's like, it's that's what I think Hell Joseon. I, I don't think it's necessarily helpful because it is kind of a pessimistic worldview, isn't it? To just kind of surrender. Oh, it certainly and say, is. Yeah, like I, it's yeah. just like hopeless, no hope, and and so. But I think that it, any like inability of society to respond to that sort of hope and just let that kind of linger and mes- metastasize is going to have a bad effect and i think that's why you see the low birth rate and all this sort of stuff you know these are all kind of interconnected yeah. in, in my mind yeah and i i think yeah it's it's easy to see you know the the picturing like the 20 year old student feeling dejected living vicariously about a a billionaire family on tv raising a child and in their mind thinking this is good enough just to be here on youtube and witnessing this and uh, living through this instead of having my own, you know, authentic life. Okay, that's dark. Uh, I want to flip it to a little bit of light. One thing I have noticed, which I've done since day one at our university going back 12 years. Um, one thing I noticed with business students I had way back 2009 and all the way through, uh, I always ask my business students what they want to do. Um, I ask all my students this, but the business students I'm most interested in because they're studying business. Uh, most of the students back then would not have any desire to do anything entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. It, they don't want to build anything. And that really surprised me. Like no one here wants to make something. You're all business students. You're studying this stuff, but nope, they just want a job. Get in a good company and top tier uh, company, you know, that's the. Yeah, that's that, the goal. that was all the it was. It was just, Samsung, I mean, LG. And there's nothing you know, wrong. I'm like not that. saying I'm not yeah. saying there's anything wrong, but there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that in a, in uh, years and having thousands of students, you would expect 
there to be at least a certain a certain portion of the students that want to design, create, put up a shingle, go for it. Um, it was really viewed as like a low thing. Like, why would I want to try to own a cafe or something that's nuts, right? That's that's like a crazy thing someone does. These days, I'm noticing more students wanting to go for it. Yeah, they want to build something. I think I have a lot of students that tell me they're not even sure what they want to do. So it's not like, oh, I have a background in like I went to a high school where I learned uh, about app development and stuff like this or programming. And I want to be able to develop that. Into business. It's not like this. It's not these students have like some real targeted thing. They just have the spirit. It's OK. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I think there's some some ambition. Well, really, I think I, and I think that might be a, a counter reaction to the, you know, before it was like, what 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 is all this academic rigor for? Well, it's to set you up as best I can to land that job at a top tier, you know, get that, get, get into a good university so that you can get into that top tier company. And that's, that used to be the path, but I think students now to see that as that's, you know, owning a cafe, being entrepreneurial is just as crazy as trying to get a job at the Samsung. odds of succeeding are just, yeah, right. like the odds are the same now. <laughs> so they're just gotten like, so yeah. nuts. <laughs> yeah, right. They, they, it used to be like the cafe thing was just wackadoodle, you know, you're crazy. Uh, go for the, you know, the, 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 you know, the thing that's worked, you know, that's the path that is well-worn through, you know, decades of, of uh, experience, but this is not your parents' economy anymore. You know, it's a, it's just a different ball game. And so, I think, uh, yeah, that 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 is interesting because I I've noticed that as well from my from my students that they're they're much more entrepreneurial minded is and there are some government initiatives that are actually funding little small businesses for mm. for people in their twenties like you can't we you know you wouldn't have access to these loans if you were in your forties or thirties they're just for young people and they're creating these these spaces. Oh, nice. And I, I wish that I, I think those are great because it gets them, you know, just like a duck bokey stand or, a, you know, some kind of burger restaurant or something. And they will help mm -hmm. them get set up and create these little, you know, businesses. Um, yeah, I've actually too long a story to put in here, but I've, I've researched some of these like uh, these things a little bit out of just curiosity. But there's many accelerator type programs um, in the country here both not just public there's private ones as well um and then those private companies of course are being bolstered by um the government so it's sort of sort of like um like uh grant writing organizations effectively but like for businesses so yeah um there's so it's groups of young people in the business of trying to find and raise up other young people to create um the next uh, business, the next industry, even perhaps, and then you know the government is subsidizing those finders, and um, yeah, it's it's there there are there are efforts being made here. I I just wonder um, uh, what would be the consequence? We haven't talked about that. What would be the consequence if no effort was made? So what would be the greater comp like the macro effect to the country? So we have an aging population. Okay, that's definitely going to be. A difficult thing we have that in the states happening um uh we have examples like japan to look at where uh, an aging population there i think has, has put some strain on their economy as well but like what would be the worst thing so the birth rate's low so what like it's sad that people can't have kids if they want to have kids but mm -hmm. so what you know there's still kids eventually like korean population will disappear I guess that I think that's that, what they're saying you know, when, is like within 80 years, they're kind of worried about that by uh, we no Koreans. Yeah. Yeah. Like no I one think, live here. This like ghost, ghost uh, peninsula. <laughs> it just doesn't, it doesn't seem possible to me. I, I, I don't know. Do you guys, I mean, um, yeah, it's, 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 I, I think of the, the birth rate. I look at it the same way I look at climate change. It's like an abstraction. I, I know it's real. But I, I feel it's too big for me to affect it. it just, I just feel so, you know, it's like, I'm not, well, not going to have I'm kids, this, you know? I'm wondering, yeah. I'm wondering where the pressure for change will come from. So, like, if we go back to, like, an industrial era, you would have, let's say, like, it's uh, the 1950s in America or, you know, whatever. Uh, we'll pick a specific place. It's 1950s in Chicago, and the population is just collapsing, right? We got all these factories. Who's going to run the factories? 
Okay, now you have a crisis. No one's running the factories. The factories aren't able to produce anything. This is going to start damaging the economy. And what happens? They're going to have to take steps to mitigate that. So they would. So if I own a factory in Chicago and I want to be want to maintain manufacturing, I need bodies to do it. I'm going to have to do something either to raise the the, the birth rate or in, figure out a way to, to attract people to come work here, you know, so maybe from abroad, maybe from, you know, interstate or maybe from another country. Um, I don't see Korea pushing a lot of, um, at least I, I mean, I live in the center of the city here. I see a few foreigners. Um, I don't feel like there's a big initiative here to bring in foreign talent. I mean, I could be wrong. I, I have no idea what's, what's actually, actually they, they just made some, weird some pressure. visa things even harder for, for some foreigners. I was talking to somebody yeah. not too long ago. Right. Um, I mean, immigration, that's how America's surviving is, I mean, their birth rate is low as well, not as low as Korea, but, but the birth rate in America is under, uh, it, it's not at replacement rate, under the but replacement the U S population. Yeah, it is. But the, the population continues to grow. Because the U.S. is, you know, famously pro-immigration through its entire history, Korea, and the, and most the Asian countries. Fascinating tend to thing not about be. America is within a generation, their the children are so Americanized. Like it's it's you know I, I think it's different here, and I don't. It's just something to do with our history yeah. and our culture. Is that within a generation, you're just Americanized, you know, and it's it's a fascinating mm. thing. So, maybe know. maybe it, maybe it could be a fun question to ask your economics students is let them like maybe they could they could enlighten us and give us a really interesting glimpse into into korea like okay so we're not in the middle of like an industrial era we have fewer and fewer jobs being created the population probably can contract quite a bit and we'll still be able to um continue moving forward but at what point does it become critical that uh the industries that are in Korea, like Samsung, needs to like recruit actively majority outside. Well, like, this is the other. Are, are people needed? Where where is that pressure? That's what I'm wondering. Like well, when, it, when will when this low birth about, rate actually have consequences? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, when we're talking about jobs, oh, no, you know, for our, like our students finding jobs, we're talking about the office managerial, the good the good jobs. We're not talking about factory jobs, white color right? Because there are, there are, there is a, 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 you know, that's the other aspect of this is that there are a lot of foreigners working in Korea because there are not enough mm. Korean people to fill those line worker jobs. And so there are a lot of people that will work for, you know, and that will, they pay pretty well by the global standard of like 1.5 million a month. That's like 1500 bucks a month, you know, $2,000 a month is a lot of money. For someone from I don't Bangladesh or whatever, you know, like it translates. If they're if their family's living on remittances, you're going to go find that job that pays the most, you know, that you can find. And, and so Korea line worker jobs are very much uh, foreigner based. So when we're when we talk about this like inability to get a job, it's a it's a certain there. There's a, we're talking about a certain uh, level that our our students are unwilling to accept. Yeah. You know? Like they're not looking that, for any. That's job. a really good point. But I kind of, yeah, I kind of, I kind of jumped over that. So I think, yeah, you made a really good point there. I wasn't thinking that way. So maybe it's not some sort of straight line. Like I'm trying to think of where that birth rate's going to actually like collapse to a point of pressure where someone needs to react to it forcefully. Like sure. in Japan, putting up posters like "If you have more babies, we'll give you more money," which is already like a thing here. I'm pretty sure. Like you, you mentioned, there mm -hmm. is some subsidizing going on for, yeah. for families if you have another kid. You get, get a check or something but um yeah maybe it's not just a straight line maybe it'll be a situation where those factory jobs that are left then maybe they become desirable and um maybe over education slows down academic inflation slows down which i don't know how that would ever happen but let's say it does i know and then yeah. those people end up wanting to work in the factories and then there's automation and then the robots take over the factories. And then, <laughs> you know, like, I think it's probably a lot more of a miasma or like a nebulous process than I can possibly comprehend. I don't know. This no, I, I, just, I, don't, I don't, I mean, I guess the, the, because who is having the kids, right? I mean, it's, it is, it is mixed race uh, couples too, right? Like, like, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's not just uh, pure ethnically Korean 
children. So you, they're, 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 yeah. the country is going to have to have to reckon with their idea of what being Korean means, I think, you know, I, I mean, what does it mean to be American? I think we that is kind of disconnected. Well, look, I mean, we can get into Trump and white supremacy and all that stuff. But that's, that's another conversation. But I think no, no, uh, America is disconnected think from with, race, right? I mean, with talking, we're talking about immigration. That's a really big difference, though, because Korea, although those those immigrants are still here working those factory jobs, they will never be Korean, right? Mm. They're here temporarily. Um, whereas a lot of people who go into America to work, you know, let's just talk about illegal immigrants. They go into work. Well, their next generation, their kids are American, right? Because they're they're there. Um, that doesn't happen here in Korea. There, right. So the population still isn't getting fixed. Some of those jobs are getting fixed, but the population problem isn't isn't going to be isn't going to feel that. Yeah. Right this this all. isn't just this isn't just like a like a U.S. versus Korea thing. You can't single out Korea for this. America is goofy in that way. We're we're very strange in that those hmm. kids that are born they're not just legally American, but they're like culturally they're going to be American. Yeah. Right. Unless yeah. they like actively try to resist it or like you know it, it, you you I, become, I you, can, culture... you can become American. If you want to you can be American. Like a French man <laughs> yeah. moves to America and he's like. I want to be American. It's like, all right, we'll work out, you know, your visa. You got to you got to stay here for a while. You got to get some ownership and you probably get your residency sorted, you know, and if not, you know, probably next gen, it will work this shit out. You can, and then we will call you an American. You might have an accent, but you're going to be like an American. Your kids probably lose that accent. Your kids but lose if you're it, in yeah. Korea, like, yeah, like if I stay here until I retire and I grow a beard and I die here, I'm never really going to be Korean, but that's not Korea. Like you could say that of like most countries that aren't America. Yeah. Right. Like America is kind of an anomaly that way. Well, I, countries I think that it's, aren't founded on right. immigrants. If know. if it, if it were, it wouldn't be. Cre- right. I mean, the culture is is just you know. I mean, that you're talking about uh, inertia of thousands of years of inertia, and I think we have a, a different. Yeah. You know, like you said, we're an anomaly. We're just a, it's a younger, basket case of. Yeah, younger uh, younger legacies. It's a little more plastic. Like yeah. I don't think I could go to you know China and ever become Chinese. I could never be Thai. You know, it's just no. not a thing. Yeah, it's it's a fascinating question though. I mean, it's yeah. Uh, I don't know. I uh, yeah. But I suppose in the future it would have to ship, right? It would just it just would. Like I mean, it'll it'll, it'll either it'll either die or it'll 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 uh, evolve to stay. You know, it's it it probably really is. the only two options. Yeah. I mean, they'll have to change. And if they say we're not changing, then you won't exist anymore. It'll it'll go away. Sink or swim. So, yeah, yeah. It's fascinating. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe 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 we will retire here and maybe the three of us will become Korean, not just in nationality, but also maybe culturally. We could actually be Korean someday. Culturally. Uh, what, It'd be interesting uh, to see this, what, what Korea is going to be like in just, 20 years. Just a, out of curiosity, this is probably not really related but where how do you guys what what do you how do you how do you feel culturally right now like where do you fit in in this uh you know i mean like i i know the kevin you have am you're I probably American? more you're deeper in than than i am you know like i understand some of the the cultural you know uh nuances and things but i'm still always you know feel like i'm on the outside of the house looking through the window at the you know mm. at Korea and I feel like you're you've made you've made your way into the house what what is that like like what what you know the, the how, how would you describe yourself like as you fit in here you still yeah I, I, before we start I want to say that also like I think of anybody not just of like friends I have like like Kevin here but like anybody I've ever really met Kev think about it I don't know how often you think about it you're living a much more genuine Korean life than just about well, anybody. Any Gyopo, you know, like in America, you're yeah, yeah. You can step like, it up enough to you want. Know? I've been sleeping on the floor for the past couple of months as well, <laughs> just to just to add that. There you go. Um, that's because of a sick dog, but still. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I I I'm weird about this. When, when I do know when I travel and people ask me where I'm from, I hate that answering that question is really weird because the question that they're, they're looking at me and they're like, "Where are you from?" And the answer they want is I'm American, but like, I don't consider America home really at all. Yeah. Korea is definitely more home, though I don't consider myself Korean and most Korean people would certainly not consider me Korean. My passport is still blue. But I bet um, if somebody met, like got to live with you for like a couple, like a week, they'd be like, this guy's Korean. 
he he doesn't look like it but you know you speak the language you most of the time yeah but you even the customs and everything like you you have to you have to navigate that because you have family that, that you're interacting with all the time that are that are daily yeah that are korean yeah i mean i do feel very it's weird to yeah i mean i i, I do feel i'm living a korean life to some extent but there's definitely some ways that i don't but I, yeah i mean over the last year and a half not going to work not going to school i probably speak korean more than i speak english at home which has been weird because then i log in and i have to try and remember what i'm talking about this is great practice for me to, to, <laughs> to be able to keep my job and and stay as a native speaker still um, you're you're you're, you're uh, putting uh s's on your plural noun still you're still remembering to do that yeah okay I'm still, okay. I'm still okay there when when uh, yeah when articles yeah, no. go away and the s's go plural s's go away we're, we're gonna have to have an intervention for you uh yeah uh, but <laughs> yeah i i think it would be i mean in some ways i've thought about i don't know if i would want to be fully korean but at the same time i wouldn't be opposed to it the korean passport is stronger than the american passport these days yeah um personally i have i if if, if there was a, a relatively hell if there was a straightforward path to korean citizenship I would probably look into it. At this point, it's very difficult. Um, I wouldn't, I don't really care about keeping my American passport. If, if the Korean one looked better these days, which it kind of does, and, and I don't necessarily see that changing. I mean, I'm not sure where the Korean passport's gonna go in the future. I don't see the American one getting any better. Um, I wouldn't have any qualms giving it up and being straight up Korean, though I still don't know if, if people would treat me Korean as I walk around the streets, of course. But I think it would actually be kind of funny if people are like, where are you from? You're like, oh, I'm, I'm Korean. I speak to them in Korean. I'm like, you're not Korean. I pull out my green passport. I'm like, bitch, yes, I am. I kind of, I, I kind of would yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, I would have, I, my, my future is wherever I am. And at the moment, I don't see myself, I really don't see myself ever going back to the States. I don't see a reason why I, that would bring me back there, like ever. You mean um, just to visit, but I'm not happy to, to stay live again. Korean. Oh, yeah. just to visit, of course, because yeah. I have family yeah. there. Um, but yeah, other than other than to visit family, there's really no reason to go back to the States. Um, and staying in Korea at this point, I don't know if it's the, it's, well, it's definitely not the best place to retire. I don't see myself retiring in Korea, actually. I'd probably save my money and move to wherever the Thailand of 2050 will be. Um, <laughs> wherever your dollar will stretch I, you. I, I would yeah. be, exactly. Yeah. Wherever my wand will stretch because, yeah, yeah I don't have dollars. I, I have wands. Um, <laughs> Probably Mongolia, uh, someplace romantic. Like. <laughs> you get a yurt. Yeah, in, yeah. 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 Everyone's yeah. got a yurt. Yeah. So I, gotta, uh, I could live in a yurt. A yurt for you. A, a yurt for you. Yeah. yeah um, we can playing cards and <laughs> eating goat. Yeah. yeah. I don't know so if that, I, don't, we... I don't think I'd renounce my, my citizenship. I don't think I would go that far, but no. Um, yeah, but. But That's I'm the one also tough part not... about Korea is you can't. I don't think currently you can dual citizen. In order to become a Korean citizen, I, I believe you have to renounce. I don't think like the U.S. would allow it, but Korea wouldn't, as far as I know. Okay. Yeah, but I, I just I would never. I mean, yeah, there'd be possible. Like if it was from like the yeah, it depends on the country's perspective. Like I had an ex girlfriend who was Canadian. She was Canadian American, um, but only from the perspective of one of the countries. I think it was from Canada. I think in America she was just American. Yeah. You so can't like, be, I don't think they, her yeah, I think yeah, America other, makes I think, you choose, right? I think that's how it was. No, America, you been, can definitely be dual. You can oh, you can have, maybe she was dual in America and then she was only Canadian in Canada. It was something, one something our, goofy like. One of our coworkers is Canadian and American in our office. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so. That's right. So Canada and America, <laughs> Canada and America is definitely some, some countries, some countries allow um, dual citizenship. Korea, I don't believe does. I know laws have changed. For a while, yeah. it was really difficult for, for young people who were born. They had different laws for, for kids, for Korean children who were born in America, because, you know, you automatically get your American citizenship. Um, so kids, they could have both until they turned 18. And then Korea basically was like, now you have to decide. Mm -hmm. You've got to declare yeah, you can keep one or the other. Um, Though I think there was a law change about that. Again, this isn't I, I, because I'm not one of those people. I, I wasn't Korean born in America. I don't really know how the law changed. But I, I think I remember reading something about that changing a few years back already. But so don't I, I would that. have I would have no problem being a dual citizen or being yeah. a citizen. 
from Korea, I feel like if I could vote in elections here, I would love to. I'd absolutely love to. I'm already paying taxes. Um, I I feel it's a government that I can trust as well as I can trust my own government in, in America. So I have no problem with with that concept. The like Kevin said, the power of the passport because travel is a big part of my life. Yeah, sure. Um, it's very reliable as a travel document. Um, the yeah, the, the rights and privileges that would come with having uh, full citizenship here, I can only I can only see it being a benefit compared to what I'm doing right now. But I would never give up my U.S. citizenship. So from the U.S. side, I would it would never be like I would pick one over the other. Okay. But if I could maintain my U.S. citizenship, yeah, I would, I would stack it on. I think for right I'd now, you'd have to you'd have to renounce to get the Korean one for sure. Um, but I've met a couple so. of people yeah. like you and uh, that that said they would do that. Um, had had considered that. A couple of Americans that said they would give it up easily to to retire here to to right. live here full time, but uh, yeah, for me, I, I've always uh, I've always kind of like I, I like being at the window outside the house looking in, and that like weird liminal space between because I'm not really living in American life, but I am, but I'm living it in Korea. I'm still acting like an American. I don't speak Korean very well at all, um, but I still have to kind mm. of navigate and kind of understand it, but. I'm a little bit standoffish, you know, about about really immersing myself fully into it. And so I've kind of found my own weird little, you know, uh, you know, my space. And uh, and it's it's uh, Man, it's an odd way would, to live. But yeah, this would, it, yeah, this would make a really cool uh, another subject. We're, we've kind of walked away from, I know, the, you know, like, it's OK, though, but it's a, it's a cool it's a cool little um, digression to use for another podcast, I think. Yeah. This is something people would like to hear about. Um, and it's kind of core to what we are and what we're representing in this podcast to everyone is three expats who've lived on this peninsula for over a decade. Collectively, we have what, like almost 40 years? We do have 40 years. Oh, yeah, 40. 40, <laughs> like 40 years of experience. Yeah. So we haven't really talked about like older than what I am. we're just trying to talk about now. Like, as much as I, I say, I would never give up my U.S. citizenship, and I do see myself as an American. I definitely also see myself, like willing or unwillingly, I don't feel like I'm the same as any American that's never lived out of America for ten years. It's something yeah, else happened. It's you something a else, person, right? Yeah, listen, a different thing. Yeah, and we could talk about this. That, that's a cool yeah. subject. That is a cool um, topic. Yeah. How how living abroad has changed us. I think that could be a thing. I don't know. Yeah, and what what, what we what you consider yourself and how you would, you know. Yeah. So uh maybe we'll we'll stop the discussion here and put a kind of uh, you know, uh ellipses there in so did uh, we solve we'll, the problem for 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 the birth rate in Korea? I, did we fix yeah, it? we finished it, right? <laughs> Six. You're, you welcome. Korea, you're welcome. You're welcome. Korea. Yeah. Good job, Korea. Um, yeah. We're you're welcome. You're welcome, Korea. Yeah, the soul patch saves the day again. That's our, uh, you know, <laughs> Scooby Doo moment, right? Pull the mask off, and uh, yeah. Um, man, thanks a lot, guys. That was a, a really interesting discussion. I I can't even wrap my mind around uh, half of what we talked about. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to this again, actually, just to to kind of uh, looking forward to listen to it digest again. it. Actually, on this, yeah, it's yeah. a really interesting one. Um, yeah. You know, the, uh, the Soul Patch, this is our uh, 20th episode. And uh, so those of you that are uh, new to the podcast or or those that have been, you know, along for the ride, we we appreciate you, the listener. Um, you can find us on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts. Um, if you could do us a solid and leave us a good review on Apple Podcasts, that would really uh, help us out as far as the uh the, the mysterious algorithm is involved. I, nobody really knows what it means, but uh, it's, it's good for us. It's magic. It's magic. Uh, you, can, uh, you can catch us on uh, you know, all the major platforms. We're also on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, the Soul Patch Podcast. And uh, so go ahead and uh, watch our videos on YouTube. Leave a comment. Um, you can also contact us at uh, the Soul Patch at gmail.com. Leave us a remark, a comment or whatever. And uh, let us know what you think. If you have an idea for an episode that you'd like us to talk about, we're uh, totally game for that too. And uh, I don't know, did I leave anything out there? I guess you could hit our website up if you want to just, uh, uh, you know, one-stop shop. Uh, it's thesoulpatch.com. Uh, That's it, thesoulpatch.com. But just remember, soul is spelled S-E-O-U-L. It's a pun. And 
It's fantastic. Fantastic. What we do. Yeah, it's what we do here. Uh, it's our, our sophisticated humor. Um, all right, man. Uh, thanks, everybody. Guys, thanks again. And uh, we'll catch you next week. All right. All right. I'd like to pay a couple of respects to the people that made me what I am today. Kiss all my love, kiss all my love. The cry of mine, kiss all my love, kiss all my love. Double me, Jim. Kiss all my love, kiss all my love, kiss all my love. The brain. Kiss all my love, kiss all my love. Hey, Bobby, let the bass go.